one. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the 1025 podcast. This is episode 13. I'm joined along with Ayana and Kristen. And today, I want to start something very special on the podcast, right? Since it's Black History Month, and since it's today, since today is our subject's birthday, I decided to start an artist spotlight on one of the most beloved and influential figure figures, excuse me, in modern music, Rihanna. Now, I was introduced to Rihanna in 2007 with her third studio album, Good Girl Gone Bad, as well, as well as like her other collaboration with other artists, right? And I do definitely think that she is one of the most unique voices to have come out, out of the pop and R&B, you know, spectrum. So today on the podcast, I decided to bring up, to dig up three so- songs from Rihanna. Man Down off of uh, Loud. Uh, let's see, Russian Roulette, which is off of Rated R, my personal favorite Rihanna album. And a double song called Love Without Tragedy slash Mother Mary. Now, we've all seen these three. What were you guys' thoughts on Man Down? This was the more, when I first uh, saw this video, it was definitely a dark track. And it was definitely a weird one out of this whole loud era, as this was more of a fun era as compared to Rated R. So what were you guys' thoughts? Um... I had been listening, I think Man Down was the most familiar song I'd been throughout the, with the selection. I have been listening to that song for years now. I think I like first started listening to it when I was in eighth grade. And I of course didn't understand like the, the true nature of the lyrics at the time, but it's something that isn't really talked about in the black community. It's something that isn't addressed when it comes to black women and sexual assault victims and you know things of that nature and it weighed really heavy on my heart like when I had actually sat down and listened to the lyrics and heard what she had to say I watched the music video and it it's a very 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 good song it's so good but I think that it's a conversation that definitely needs to be had. Definitely. Kristen? Um, I remember back when I was younger and everything, listening to all the time, especially in seventh grade, basically eighth grade. Yeah. Now, when I first listened to this uh, track, I remember I was at my cousin's house. This was like the summer of 2011 when Loud came out. And my brother, who was a huge Rihanna fan, actually showed me and my cousin this video. And when I was watching it, I'm going to be real with you. This was one of like the scariest and the weirdest videos out there because it was like we're in this environment that's not really, you know, we don't want well, like, When I was younger, you know, I didn't know as much about Barbados and the Caribbean and all that type of stuff. But with Rihanna, this is her, you know, this is her home. This is where she grew up in. And I just love the opening, like the opening scene that we get where they're at this train station. Rihanna comes out the shadows and she has this gun and she shoots the man who, of course, revealed assaults her. Another thing that I thought was so cool about this entire era was the use of my favorite color, red. Of course, that was Rihanna's hair, you know, during the time, my personal favorite hairstyle. And it represents a lot, during, like the color red, especially when used in visual art, it represents a lot of things, you know. Of course, we think of love, we think of ambition, passion, Mm -hmm. all that type of stuff. But in this video, it represents danger. Throughout those, these five minutes, we get this sense, this unnerving sense of dread all throughout. Even when Rihanna's just having a nice, happy day in the neighborhood, we feel like something, something weird is about to happen. Something dangerous is about to happen and then when she's at the club one night and the guy who's wearing a red shirt approaches her and assaults her it shows that that the color red throughout those five minutes represented a dangerous environment that rihanna was known you know to live in 
know and i think that video and the song in general is really good it kind of reminds me of and i can't um i don't remember the track uh the name but it reminds me of a track off of good girl gone bad and i can't remember what it was called i think I think it's called Unfaithful or something like that, mm. where basically Rihanna says, like, I don't want to be a murderer and all that. And I was thinking to myself, mm-hmm. that was probably the precursor to Man Down. But yeah, definitely a phenomenal video and a phenomenal song. And I also like the ending where Rihanna, ru- when Rihanna runs back to her house and she gets that gun and she's about to kill this man, you can kind of see that that's her descent from into the good girl gone bad you know the good girl that we saw in the beginning turning into this bad person you know which definitely definitely is a great song and then one more thing i now me personally i think that uh man down doesn't really fit the loud aesthetic of this era because loud is a very fun and very it's a very upbeat type of, you know, era for Rihanna. You know, we had songs like Only Girl in the World, What's My Name, s and and all that type of stuff. So this very dark Caribbean track doesn't really fit the overall fun <laughs> vibe that Loud presented itself. Me personally, I feel like this song should have been on Rated R and then Rude Boy, which was on Rated R, should have been moved to, should have been switched to Loud. So I think Rihanna should do like a little switcheroo when it came to it. Yeah. I think a song like Man Down is something at the time wasn't expected from Rihanna. It, I definitely like listening to all of her other tracks, like you had named s and all those kinds of thing, Umbrella, all of her most popular hits. And then I come across this, I'm like, whoa, what's, this is really new. This is something I, I hadn't heard before. It was so crazy to me. And it it felt dangerous. Like listening to Man Down is exactly how I felt about listening to Rude Boy, but for completely different reasons. They made me feel like what I was listening to, I should not have been listening to. Yeah. And it it was, it was so crazy to me, but the music video made it, makes sense like when i would listen to the song without the video i'd be like this is so this is so crazy she's really out here killing people this is this is wild but then when i would watch the video i'm like no because i get it like this is kind of understandable i get why you would make something like this especially in that era when that was a very taboo thing to happen to a lot of women and I'm glad that even at such a time in the middle of her discography where she would make tons of other different genres of music with her, with her reggae sounds and her upbeat tones, even like with her debut song, Pum to Replay, like those kinds of things. And then you get to Man Down and it was, it was, it felt like a culture shock, yeah. but it, it felt good to know that artists like that could do things like that just completely in the middle of a usually upbeat tone. And yeah. it's really good. I love this song so much. And I think that's kind of what makes her such a powerful artist. Do you feel exactly how she felt when making it? Definitely. And mm-hmm. one of the things that I've always admired about Rihanna and I've always loved about her is that she never had to portray herself as this very perfect individual. You get what I'm saying? A lot of pop artists, they try to portray like i'm this perfect you know person brianna's like no i'm just a regular smeggler girl from barbados who Mm -hmm. became the biggest artist in the world you know what i'm saying i love that another thing though and i kind of want to talk a little bit about this and then we can move on to russian roulette is the overall vibe of the song where if you hear the um the police sirens you know throughout the song it kind of feels like Rihanna sitting down with, you know, her mom ta- telling her, hey, this is what I did. And then the police are literally like pulling up to their house about to arrest her. Love that. Very cinematic track as well. Very. And, def- and definitely one of my personal favorite Rihanna songs. Yeah. Whew. All right. Now we're going to move on to 
Russian Roulette. Now, this is from Rihanna's, I believe, fourth studio album, Rated R. And this is and this is my favorite Rihanna album, personally. Personally, this is my favorite. The reason why this is my favorite is because it took Rihanna and it made her into like a darker, uh, we, we, how can I say this? We were introduced to her somber mind. Of course, this was made, I think, like nine months after the Chris Brown incident. Of course, you know, we all know what happened there. And I remember when I first saw the music video for Hard on 106 in Park with my brother, I was like, yo, this is so freaking cool. It's like a, it kind of reminded me of like a Michael Bay movie mm -hmm. and all that. Like when she was on the uh, the pink tank and she had the Mickey Mouse helmet, I was like, yo, this chick is dope. And then I listened to it. And then this song definitely was a huge standout at the time. And watching the music video, because I remember I watched the music video at my grandma's house. This was like a, whoa, she's literally sitting down with like this dude, her love interest played by Jesse Williams. And they're doing Russian roulette and like she was mm -hmm. bleeding and there was red gas everywhere. And I'm just like, whoa, what was y'all's thoughts on this video? Man. <clears throat> it was a lot to take in because i will be honest this was the first time watching the video i had heard the song numerous times before but this was just one of those songs where i like i don't think i need the video for this i'm pretty sure it's the lyrics are pretty self-explanatory you're taking a chance on love on somebody who you're about to give your all to so you have to play the game you have to do it step by step you have to do it it's inevitable but when i watched the video but the one thing that I love the most about Rihanna is that she is so cinematic with everything that she does. Every music video that I've seen from her so far has told a story similar yet different from the song itself. It's so it's so much darker than the song itself conveys, and it's so good. It's yeah. It made me feel not necessarily that I was there, but like I I was watching it from the from that glass outside the room. I was watching her break down. I was watching her play that game with that love interest. It made me feel like I was, you know, directing it from my own eyes. And it felt really, it felt really real, especially of those small little breaths that she would take. And like at the end when she like showed signs of distress after it was all over, it was so, it was so beautifully made, so meticulously thought out. And it was, it was amazing. I love that video. Yeah. Chris. <clears throat> I really just felt like it was powerful, all the imagery and stuff that she displayed. Um, but Ayana is right. The song definitely speaks for itself yeah yeah man because when i first saw this video it was on mcv right and this was back when this was like back when mtv was slowly you know not really being the thing they used to be right mm -hmm. so when me and my brother watched it, it it was just like we were clearly like blown away like ayana was saying rihanna's music video rihanna is one of the few artists who have cinematic music videos some of the best literally out there like i can name a bunch of artists who have great music videos as well like the weekend who one day we'll talk about him you know on the podcast as well mm -hmm. uh of course like kendrick lamar beyonce kanye all of them but the thing that makes rihanna stand out because there were a bunch that i wanted to show you guys as well like needed me off of loud uh we found love so many so many the thing that makes Russian Roulette a standout track off of Rated R and a standout video in this era is the overall darkness and gloomy nature that encapsulates this world. You know, when we see Rihanna, she's literally in like this solitary confinement, kind of like containment cell. And we see this red gas kind of, um, you know, fill up the room, red representing danger in this era as well. And 
literally when she's at the table with Jesse Williams playing, you know, Russian roulette, you could just feel this, like, just so nervous for both of them because it's like, bro, you know, if one messes up, they'll end up dead. And just the fact that this this song was literally created through out a dark period of Rihanna's life and a period of her life that people still, you know, bring up for both, you know, Rihanna and Chris Brown, definitely it it shows that some artists they create their best art throughout a dark period of their life, you know. Mm-hmm. This is a good example. Rated R is a good example. I think of projects like House of Balloons from The Weeknd. That's a good example. Just and in the f- final shot of the video where the love interest shoots himself, you could just feel the the ooh, just the overall. I can't even describe it. Just the overall, just pain that oozes yeah. throughout that environment. That murky darkness, like it just felt dirty. It felt so dark and gritty. Honestly, that's the whole thing that, that's the one word that literally encapsulates rated R in general, just gritty darkness, you know? But yeah. yeah. It's such a, it's such a powerful music video and the tale of love and how you give your all and it may amount to nothing or it may end up suffocating the other person or whatever the case may be. It's so... uh, I really like this is one of the things that I really couldn't explain. It's something that you would have to experience. It's such an experience to fall so head over heels for somebody just for something like that to happen. And it's yeah. it's it's amazing, honestly. It's almost like she's it's almost like she's comparing her experience with Chris Brown as to you know to russian roulette like that mm-hmm. is overall like uh just messed up you know experience yeah mm-hmm. it's kind of weird that we literally like speeding through these uh tracks because now we're gonna talk about and this is really a double song this was off of rihanna's album unapologetic which just came out i believe 2011 2012 one of those well yeah, 2012, because Anti came later in 2016. Mm-hmm. And I'm not, not going to lie, though. This song also is a standout off of this album. It's called Love Without Tragedy slash Mother Mary. Now, Love Without Tragedy, I think, is an okay song. I think it's okay. It, she's kind of detailing the relationship that she had with Chris Brown. You know, you were a James Dean on the low. You know, James Dean was the original heartthrob and all that type mm-hmm. of stuff. And Chris Brown was a heartthrob in the earlier stages of his career. And, you know, it's a it's a cool track you can listen to when driving at night. But then it transitions to this beautiful, haunting, and eerie ballad where basically Rihanna is literally just giving herself to God, basically. Like, the line where she says, I'll be a star if you keep directing me. Let's make the best scene they've ever seen. Basically, for as long as you think my career will last, even though th- during this time Rihanna low key was solidified, not even low key, she was solidified. Let's just give them what they want. Now, what were you guys' thoughts on these two songs right here, "Love Without Tragedy" and "Mother Mary"? I think "Love Without Tragedy" is very much like Russian Roulette in that it's quite self-explanatory. The fact that they're is no music video is it's one of those tracks where I'm completely fine without a visual because it I can it gives you the opportunity to make your own it's such a it's such a listen late night with your eyes closed you just got to feel something type of song and the one line that is of course the main focal point in my opinion is at the very end of the chorus before they get to Mother Mary Where's what's love without tragedy? Because what is love without tragedy? You can't have you can't have light without a little darkness. It doesn't exist. You can't right. have love without some kind of pain at some point. And it's very 
it's very, it's tragic. It's always tragic. It's always something that you don't expect or something that you don't agree with or something that you might not even be comfortable with, something you've never even experienced before, but it's something that happens to the best of us. It happens to all of us, whether it be in the form of small arguments here and there, you've got financial issues, or it could, it could have nothing to do with your partner at all. It could be all internal, something that you just haven't dealt with yourself, but it always affects the other person. And it always draws that love, that wedge in between you two. And it's tragic every single time. There's never a relationship I've ever heard of where it was all sunshine and rainbows the whole time. Nobody has a cupcake phase their whole entire relationship. There's gonna be something to happen. And it's important that people know that. People don't expect for their entire relationship to just be frosted cupcakes and, oh, I love you. Oh, lovey-dovey type stuff. Cause it's not, that doesn't last as long as people hope for it to. And right. that tragic part of love always hits them in the face. It always knocks them off their high horse. And it's, it's, it's very needed to strengthen a relationship, no matter the context of it. It's always important to have some kind of tragedy within your love. Yeah. I think um, the song is definitely a great metaphor to convey um, her feelings about her past love. Now it's kind of wasted on someone who didn't treat her correctly. But um, I definitely do believe that it's kind of like a foreshadowing of her own future too. Because she said she's going to be here as long as we want her to. And as we all know, she no longer makes music. So she's obviously in a whole different spotlight with Savage X and everything. Infinity Beauty. I like how I like how you pointed out she doesn't uh make music anymore because like everybody literally is begging her to release some music. Like my brother's like, bro, please release some freaking music. Like her lane that she loves. Right. If if that's what makes her happy, hey, do you, sis? But and it's it's really weird because like when I first heard this track too. I was in like seventh grade when I heard this track. And like Ayana was saying, it does like Love Without Tragedy and I would say Mother Mary as well fit mm -hmm. that vibe of, you know, you laying out like at night, it was all dark, your eyes closed and you're just listening to the music. And I definitely agree with uh, what you were saying, Kristen, where Rihanna is basically somewhat it's somewhat a metaphor for rihanna's future you know this was her give i feel like this was her trying to you know get past the things that were haunting her life basically you know of course in love without tragedy she talks about you know chris brown and all that i feel like that incident still was affecting her and even though i think Unapologetic came out in 2012 and the Chris Brown thing was in 2009. So it was still fairly new in people's mm -hmm. minds. I feel like Mother Mary was her being like, okay, as long as I'm here, I just want to make the best stuff possible. I don't want to be, you know, in none of those dramas and beefs and all that type of stuff. I just want to do something that makes me happy. And again, it makes Rihanna just human. I love, that's one of the main things I love about her is that she didn't, she never had to portray herself as this larger than life figure. She just portrayed herself as just a regular person. Granted, has more money than everybody, but just a regular <laughs> person. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> like, that's what I dug about her. And, you know, she, I, I think I read an article that her uh, Fenty Beauty line just, like profited a billion dollars or something like that so it's like you know she, she doing it and as much as i love rihanna's music her music has always been um uh, a big influence in my life i started listening to her around like seventh grade eighth grade and i owe that all to my dad he's got really great music taste and he unknowingly introduced me to California King Bed, one of my absolute 
favorite Rihanna That's my brother's of favorite all track. time. It is such a great song. And what I love the most about her is that, like you said, she's so unapologetically her. Everyone is begging her to release this, release that. Come on, just it's one track. We'll, we'll whatever, whatever, whatever. She's been doing this for basically half of her life. She dropped out of high school at 15 to pursue a music career. And she's now today, 33, wanting to do something completely different with her life. And I don't blame her. Music for 15 years after everything that she's been through from her childhood, even in between her music career, I would want to move on from that chapter of my life too. I'd want to start yeah, yeah. doing bigger things. I'd want to, and I'm, I'm so... I'm so happy that despite everything that has happened to her in her childhood, what happened to her between, between Chris Brown, all the media coverage and stuff about it, she was able to move past that. She was able to grow from it and build such an empire. She started with her music career and now she's ending it with her, with her makeup line, with her skincare line, and even now with her, with her lingerie line, which might not be pursuing but she did what she needed to do for that time being it it popped off like it was supposed to and and i like that she keeps moving as if she doesn't owe anybody anything because she doesn't she's living her life the way that she wants to to live it she's doing what she wants to do and it makes me it makes me happy to see to have seen her grow at this point in her life and I love it. I'm always gonna cherish her old music. I'm always gonna cherish her newer stuff, her, all of her features, whatever the case may be. But I can't deny the fact that at some point music for some people is gonna get old and they're gonna wanna move on to bigger things. And I'm, I'm quite happy about it, honestly. Yeah. But yeah, it's I definitely am. I'm so happy that you guys like enjoy these three tracks because I really wanted to show y'all some of Rihanna's more underrated work because, you know, when, when you think of Rihanna, you think of Pond Replay, Umbrella, Diamonds, you think of, uh, I think I already said Umbrella, yeah. You, you think of so many just chart-topping hits mm -hmm. and all that type of stuff. But what about the tracks that weren't really as popular as like you know those you know i'm i'm so glad you guys enjoyed these tracks uh still you know these are some of my personal favorites from rihanna and i don't really listen to rihanna like that anymore you know i i used to when i was in middle school i still do you know here and there but i'm really glad that you guys enjoyed it and yeah I listen to Rihanna a lot for my bonus yeah. mom at home. We listen to Love on the Brain. That's her favorite song. She's always, Rihanna, can you put on Love on the Brain when we're cooking or something? I'm like, yes, yes, yeah. I can. We listen to Man Down a lot. Of her being from Caribbean Roots as well, she loves Rihanna's music. She loves the feel of it, the 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 reggae undertones, all of that. And so I, I, just, I just love Rihanna so much. She's one of my favorite artists of all time. She's never made she's never written a song that i'm like mm, i'm not really feeling this like a, each of her albums each of her songs warrants a different emotion for a certain time that i can always yeah. come back to and that's what i like the most about her i could never get tired of listening to rihanna ever yeah what about you kristen you got it you got the similar you know feeling that ayana has yeah i really like Rihanna. Um, still haven't invested in her beauty brand yet, though. Her foundations are really good. I use them. They're really good. <laughs> well, Rihanna, you've heard it from there. Ayana and Kristen will support your beauty line. <laughs> yeah. What's uh? Yeah. That I know that was really quick, really like fast as hell that we just sped through that, but. Glad y'all enjoyed it. Any final thoughts, my friends? That's it. What about you, Kristen? All right, you guys. Thank y'all for watching the 1025 podcast. I'm Jordan along with Ayana and Kristen, and we will see you next time. Peace.